Hey folks, in this short video, we're gonna look at two main ideas, the fundamental counting principle and the factorial rule of counting. For the fundamental counting principle, here's our problem situation that's gonna illustrate the idea. How many different sandwiches can a person make if they choose a meat, a cheese, and a bread, if the person has two meats to choose from, three cheeses, and two types of bread? And so our way that we'd illustrate this, we can illustrate it with, with a tree diagram. So if I start, the first decision is what meat to get. And let's just call it meat one and meat two, turkey, ham, whatever you wanna call it. From there, if they choose meat one, then they could choose any of three types of cheeses. And if they chose meat two, they could choose any of those three types of cheeses. So, so far there's six outcomes, right? But then within each of these outcomes, they have two types of bread to choose from. So, for, so here they could have chose bread one or bread two. From here they could have chose bread one or bread two, so on and so forth. And you can see kind of the bottom, very bottom of that part is getting cut off down there but you can kind of see how we calculate the total numbers. We do two times three times two. If we did two times three times two, that would be 12. And if you counted these over here, there would be 12 total sandwiches they could make. And this is called the fundamental counting principle. And this would be your definition if you're gonna write that down. If there are n ways to choose the first item and m ways to choose the second item, then there are n times m ways to choose both items. You just multiply them. So here would be our, our next example. It says you're choosing a new password. You want the characters to alternate between letters and numbers. And let's say for our numbers, if you have the digits zero through nine, that would give you 10 options because you know zero, if you count zero, that makes 10. If you start with a letter and you have five total characters, how many possible passwords could you create? So just like the last one, we want to know how many possible sandwiches. Here we want to know how many possible passwords. So what we have is there's five decisions and our, our tree diagram here would be massive. That's why the fundamental counting principle is so helpful for us. But let's say we have a letter, a number, a letter, a number, and a letter. So we're alternating the way it described and it said we're going to start with a letter. So our first decision, we have 26 total options. And then for our second option, which is a number, we have 10 total options. And then our third, we want a letter. And then our fourth, we want a number. And then our fifth, we want a letter. And if I multiply all of those values, you find out that we have almost 2 million different passwords we could create with these restrictions. So like I said, that is the fundamental counting principle. Now let's look at our next idea, which is called the factorial rule of counting. It says there's three students, Albert, Beyonce, and Clara, and there are three desks in the classroom. How many different ways could these students choose their seats? And so if I look at it, the way I think of it is this. For that, first, we have our first desk, our second desk, and our third desk. And, and what we have to do is we have to just select them in order in a problem like this. And so if I look, if I'm choosing the number of students that could fit in my first desk, you could have three possible students fit in my first desk. If we're thinking about this like our previous idea, the fundamental counting principle, then you might think, oh, well, there's three options for the second desk. But think about how is this problem different than the previous problem? In this problem, we're talking all about people. We don't go from um, breads to cheeses to whatever. For example, if there's three possible outcomes for my first desk, there's not three possible outcomes for my second desk. There's only two because one person's sitting in the first desk. And then once I've done three and two, then my last desk would just have a one. So if I multiplied three times two times one, that would give me six. Now, if we wanted to generalize this idea, this, di this idea of multiplying and decreasing the number that you multiply by every time, that's called a factorial, okay? And the factorial is like the exclamation point. So this is called the factorial rule of counting. The number of ways of counting in different items is in. It's like an excited in, but it's th this right here means we're multiplying the decreasing value every time. So here's, here's my next example. A professor has prepared a four question test for her class. She would like to make the test each student receives different by providing the students with the same questions but in a different order. How many tests can be made using these same four questions? Well, once again with the same idea, how many question options do we have for question one? Well, any of our four questions could go there but then from our second question on the test, there's only three options because you've already got one of the questions there. Then there's two, and then there's one. So if I multiply all these together, you get 24. And another way of writing this is I could have just said um, four factorial. This is that factorial rule of counting. 
And that's all for this video. We did the fundamental counting principle and the factorial rule of counting. Now we're going to extend these ideas in our next video to talk about combinations and permutations.